my question really is, uh, okay, uh, the Labour Party gets in uh, after a, a yes vote, and um, what is the Labour Party proposing to do to ensure that that democratic involvement continues well beyond uh, uh, all the hullabaloo? Well, um, at the moment, I think they're, they're proposing la la la, I'm not listening. Um, <laughs> but I, I understand what you're asking, so um, who wants to respond to that first? I suppose what I would say is, yes, you're right, but um, I suppose the, the campaign for independence, after that there will be then a campaign where people will vote for what they want, and if people want tax cuts for the rich, fine, they will vote for that. I mean, what I'm interested in is local democracy, and then you decide which government you want. Like everybody else, I'm not a member of the SNP, nor am I a, a supporter. I think after we have independence, we then decide locally, this is the kind of policies we'll vote for, and this is what we want. And it's up for, to Labour and every other party to kind of come up with the policies that will appeal to, to Scottish working people. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, voting yes just gives you the right to choose. That's all. It means you can choose your future. But what, what future that is, you've got to know what's available. Like what? To be able to choose, you've got to know what's available. And that's really the nub of my question. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think if there's a yes vote in September, there's going to be a huge political shake-up. And I think before, you know, there'll be a Scottish general election in 2016. I would hope that, the, I mean, the, well, the Labour Party might just hide in the sand. I don't know. But one would hope that it might decide that it's got to put forward a proposal for that election, and the other parties would as well, and we'll see what the vote is. My guess is that if there's a yes vote, then probably in 2016, I think there would be an element, an element of to the victor of the spoils, and I think the SNP would probably win that, and I think people might see that as some guarantor of getting the vote delivered. Um, but by 2021, I think the SNP will be a fringe party, because it will have split apart, and politics in Scotland will have realigned onto normal models. <laughs> Well, I think the, for the Labour Party to, to survive, I think it will have to realign itself with its left-wing nature, and, 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 and that's the first thing I would say. Uh, how it does that and when it does that is really dependent on us. Um, like Tommy, I think the SNP are the one that's likely to split, because already, I mean, it's amalgam of, an amalgam of different forces at the moment, mm -hmm. from the pro-business side to the, the left-wing side. I know three people in the cabinet that have come into the SNP from what I would call a leftwards direction. Uh, one was from the a CND background, uh, one was from the, the campaign to stop the privatisation of Scottish water, and another one I knew as a child uh, who was brought up in a Communist Party home, and she came from a Marxist background into the SNP. So that's three of the cabinet members that I know who have come in from that left side. Now, they won't hang about with the Fergus Ewings of this world uh, whenever there's an argument on ideology. Um, on the other hand, in, in the Labour side, um, you might get a split there as well, I've no idea. But my belief is that the natural home of people in Scotland is the Labour Party. Uh, if, if there was uh, a natural party of government, to me it would be the Labour Party, because that's how most of the working class in this country have been brought up. Now, but they have to reconnect with their principles, with their real values, and with policies that reflect those values. And once they do that, and I think they'll be forced to do that, or else they'll be wiped out. My, my view is kind of the same. I, I, mean, I see it being that, that <coughs> break between the actual 18th of September and then 2016 will be a, an election race, basically, with the people of Scotland. And the people of Scotland are generally a left aligned nation of people anyway. So I see the Labour Party hopefully reforming back to what it should be, which I would imagine it would do. I, I, I would hope that quite a lot of our people that shouldn't be there won't be there when it happens because obviously we need to take votes from certain people and I would imagine hopefully we'll get let back into our CLPs to get into those votes. If generally the Labour Party doesn't conform back to its roots, then I, I do see a Socialist Party emerging mm. with a lot of activists that are disillusioned with the Labour Party still being involved in coming forward, which you might find have more progressive policies than what the Labour Party do. 
It depends who registers the Scottish Labour Party name first on the 19th of September, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's not actually a registered name because it's part of the actual Labour Party in London. It's not actually a registered name. But I do see there will be splits within the parties. I do see the SNP split the same as Pat said. But I do see it being that because they, they have fought, a lot of them have fought for their whole lives for independence. So once independence is gained, what do you fight for after that? So it depends what their beliefs are in their core. So it, it's kind of like us as trade unionists, we, we will reassess the situation after the 18th of September and see who we go with, because we will then have to align ourselves with a party as well. So it, it, all, it all depends on who offers what after independence. And that is the time to do it, is the race in the first year.